here, either about to be inducted or are already members of the Beta Club, shows that, one, you've already made a decision of some type. And I know that at this point in our lives, there are a lot of decisions that we've already made and some that we will be making, a lot that we'll be making. And there will come a point, if it has not already happened, that you have to decide what is the most important thing in your life and what is that big decision, what is that thing that you are going to pursue with everything that you have. And tonight I want to tell you a little bit about how that decision that I made changed my life and that was dedicating my life to Jesus Christ. When I was a little girl, my parents made me go to church. It wasn't something that I just did or that I even liked to do, but it was something I was forced to do, and at the time I didn't appreciate that at all. Now I see the value of that, but then I didn't. And when I was about seven years old, I decided that I wanted to become a Christian. I decided that I wanted to be saved and to know Jesus as my Savior. But have you ever went on a diet and not really wanted to be on a diet? doesn't work real well because chances are you're going to cheat enough to cancel out any dieting that you actually do. And that's sort of the way I was with church. You know, I was there and I knew it was the thing to do, but I was just kind of satisfied with being there. And about my sixth grade year, I remember feeling very dissatisfied with where I was at in my Christian walk and I realized that no matter what I did and no matter who I was friends with, you know, no matter where I went, whatever, that there was nothing that could fulfill this um, emptiness inside of me. It was not necessarily a lonely or a depressed feeling, but it was just a yearning. There had to be more to life than what I was living. And I remember about this time I started to read the Bible. Prior to that, I had only read the Bible in Sunday school or just whenever I was forced to. And I remember reading in the New Testament, and this is truly what began the change in my life. Because at that time, when I really got into the Word of God, I realized that that was what I wanted. And at that time, I made that decision not just to go to church, but to sincerely live a life to the best of my ability that would honor Jesus Christ for all that He had done for me. And when I made that decision and I truly began to pursue Him, that is when my life changed forever. And I know it will never be the same because He is number one to me above all other goals and everything that I've said in my life. He is the most important, and just to be honest, my relationship with him is what has kept me from doing a lot of wrong things throughout my years so far, and I know that as long as I stay with him, it will shelter me from trouble in the future. And tonight, um, I know that being in school, we're all familiar with formulas. And so, I've got a formula here tonight. It's a four-step formula for success. This can be spiritual success, academic, Whatever in your life, it can apply to anything. Step number one is to have an ant mentality. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8 says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no god, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. First of all, whatever you decide that you want in life, whether it be spiritual, whether it be an academic goal, you have to make up your mind and say, This is what I want, and I know it's going to require work. It's going to require pursuit, but I'm willing to do that because this is what I want. Step number two, set the goal and put your focus on it. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. We can't do anything about our past or where we are now. But one thing that we have to remember is that from this moment on, the future is in our hands and we can decide to do whatever we want as long as we put our focus and our mind to that. Step number three, pace yourself and be realistic. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You can look around you and see people that have not succeeded, and you can see people that have succeeded. And then you make your choice whether you want to be one of those that have or one of those that haven't. And you have to, you can't look at your life as a sprint. It's not just going to be a short distance. You have to realize that there will probably be falls, 
and delays, but it's, it's a marathon. You just have to keep going at it, and you have to realize that eventually you can reach your goal. Um, finish what you start. 2 Timothy 4 and 7 says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. If you keep continually running that marathon and keep your eyes on the prize, you know that eventually you will succeed in whatever it is that you set your mind to. So tonight I'll leave you with that. Um, if you all would, just bow your heads with me and I'll leave us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I come to you tonight, and most of all, Jesus, just thanking you, Lord, for your sacrifice that makes it possible for me to talk to you whenever I need to, God. And I just lift up every person, God, that will be in this auditorium tonight, Lord. Those that would know you and have made that decision, God, and those that wouldn't, you know, every heart and every situation, God. And I just pray that some way and somehow, God, that you would open all of our eyes, God, and keep us clear and our focus to be on you in whatever decision that we would make. Lord, I pray that you would help us, God, just to protect us, God, and to keep our minds on you. Lord, that you would open our spiritual vision, God, in everything that we do, God, and we give you all praise and all honor and glory, Lord, because you are worthy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we'll introduce Ms. Carolyn Cox, the Vice Principal of Campbell County High School in charge of curriculum. Glad to be with you tonight. Uh, this is a special occasion in my eyes. Uh, I would like to see the students get it recognized for their academic achievement. How quickly time flies. Many of you and I remember seeing you in the gym in eighth grade night, and you were apprehensive, and your parents were even worse. They were a nervous wreck. Well, at least tonight they get to relax and get the feel. A sense of pride in seeing you recognized for your academics. It's not easy to maintain academic standards in high school. It gets tough sometimes. And tonight, when we recognize you, I hope you'll feel that pride in yourself and the parents will feel pride in what their son or daughter has done. The people on the stage are two year members. They were inducted last year. I'm going to recognize those and I want them to stand and remain standing. And we're going to start in the back so that you can see your child more clearly because we start to run the people in the back and never get seen. And for most high school students, if their name starts with a W, everybody's worn out by the time we get to them. So this is their moment of glory. Are you ready? Gabe Wilson. Hope Wilhoy. Sarah West. Amy Walls. Tracy Tackett. Robert Summers, Danielle Stouffer, Emily Smithers, Amanda Skeen, Natasha Shelton, Angela Shears, Andrea Sharp, Tasha Rogers, Jenny Prater, Miranda Powell, Tamara Muse, Crystal Mullins, Cody Morris, Jessica Mefford, Sharissa Lowe, Cody Kitts, Savannah Kennedy, Natalie Hunley, Trey Hudson, Sherry Howell, Leah Howard, Josh Howard, Marin Hill, Michelle Hensley, Trinity Heatherly, Ben Heath, Rebecca Hall, Amanda Gibson, Fallon Gatz, Heather Elam, Sandy Comer, Robin Campbell, Christy Bunch, Laura Brown, Rebecca Bradley, Tiffany Boshears, Shelley Ayers, Ashley Asbury, Amber Albertini. Well done.
that I'll recognize at this time. Beta Club officers for this year. Treasurer, Andrea Sharp. Secretary, Ashley Asbury. Vice President, Amanda Gibson. And President, Miranda Powell. And at this time, I will turn it over to the President, Miranda Powell. Thank you and good evening. Fellow students, I've always heard from adults with wisdom and intelligence that what each student needs in school is a challenge, a stimulus to push him or her onto his or her best work. We at the Beta Club hope that we provide such an incentive. The requirements for membership are such that a student must show a commendable attitude besides a great deal of accomplishment and grades. Today, we meet here to honor those whom we feel have done the most toward these ends. We prepare to induct a new harvest of betas into our club. We say these students represent a harvest because we hope that the combined efforts of teachers and students have cultivated a group of new betas who will be a help to their teachers, their fellow students, and their school. reading the program, each, each one of the letters in the word harvest is going to be elaborated on by one of our um, beta students, beginning with Robert Summers, and when he finishes, Amanda will follow, and then so on and so on. Honesty. Honesty plays a very important part of the baby. The honor of being picked as a Beta Club member should give a person enough feeling for us to want to be honest. The honesty of your character plays a large part in your becoming a Beta. What is honesty? And how does one go about being honest? First, as we all know, you don't cheat or steal in any sense of the word. But really, there is more to it than that. It also means you are honest enough to consider the rights of others to be as important as your own rights. You must be honest with yourself. When a confusing or seemingly impossible situation confronts you, ask yourself this. Is what I am doing an honest thing for not only myself, but for all the people involved? If you can give a sincere yes to this, an honest yes, then you are accepting the challenge of being a worthy citizen to your school, state, and nation. Achievement. Instead of, instead of looking at the word achievement as defined in the dictionary, let's examine it from another viewpoint, that of a beta. In order to become a member, you must not only have achieved a high, a high scholastic standing, but also you must have achieved an outstanding character, character as well. Upon becoming a beta member, you will become more familiar with the word achievement. The beta club sets high standards for its members, and it takes, takes a lot of achievement to meet these standards. Only by putting forth an effort as an individual and as a group can these achievements be experienced and the standards met. It is often said that if you're the best, you've achieved a lot. There is a lot of truth in this statement, and I think it is something everyone can profit by. Responsibility. There is an unhealthy attitude that seems to be prevalent among young people, but especially young men and women. These misguided individuals th seem to think that it is better to criticize and complain than to contribute. To knock down is to build up and to take for granted our heritage rather than accepting the responsibility of maintaining and enhancing it. Too many of these people remain a helping hand and still realizing that they have hand to help themselves. It is not unusual these days to hear some teenager express the belief that the world owes him or her everything. So you should take some of the responsibilities of your home, school, and community. This will strengthen your character and make you a finer person. Vision. We may just consider vision as an ability to better 
ourselves through mental awareness. We do not look upon our future as a closed door, but as a door that is opening to us new fields of knowledge every day. To become active in these fields of knowledge and to acquire the know-how, we must strive to achieve the very best we possibly can. For what we obtain in our minds as knowledge will benefit us as individuals and through us, our school, community, state, and nation. As for you, new babies, vision will enable you to excel. Everyone's goal should be to try to better him or herself. And through, this, and through vision, this is possible. We need to work hard for these goals and achievements. But we can only do this through our own efforts and enthusiasm. If we develop vision, we can achieve anything we strive for. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is one of the qualifications that all betas are chosen. A beta will be of greater value to his or her club and school if he or she is enthusiastic. From enthusiasm, uh, stem all virtues of beta. Responsibility, initiative, character, attitude, and courtesy are all important, but if each is coupled with enthusiasm, more can be accomplished. There are things that we do in our lives that we don't necessarily appreciate or want to do, but if you can put yourselves into everything that you do, that is truly noble, and you can be proud of yourself because you're the one who accomplished that. Each of our beta members is enthusiastic. Each of our new beta members is enthusiastic. And I can assure you that all of our future beta members will be enthusiastic. Thank you. Sincerity. Sincerity is defined as freedom from false pretense. This definition covers a very broad area. How do we, as betas, associate our club with this characteristic? In our pledge, we declare that we shall strive to maintain high ideals of achievement, leadership, and character. We are sincere as we make this pledge. We are sincere as we try to live up to the reputation of the Beta Club in all aspects of school life. We are sincere in our support of the band, football team, cheerleaders, and all other clubs and activities. We are sincere in our campaign to assist the student body, and finally, we are sincere as we try to promote higher academic standards. In this manner, we are showing that we're genuinely interested in the image of our school. <clears throat> Tolerance. Tolerance may be defined as having a sympathy or indulgence for diversity in thought and conduct. Why is tolerance important to a beta? Do we all have to think and act alike? No. We do have similar goals and aspirations, but we should not be too critical of those who fail to cultivate in their life and conduct the principles that we are striving toward. When one is asked to join the Beta Club, it is assumed that the person has made an honest effort to develop certain qualities. At the same time, there must be a concerted effort on the part of each Beta to help in the adjustment of our new members as they assume the role of leading by serving others. As we bring in this harvest of new Beta members, let us be tolerant of them as they make an honest effort to develop the qualities of Honesty, achievement, responsibility, vision, enthusiasm, sincerity, tolerance. Now, if I ask you without looking at your programs what each one of the letters stand for, can you tell me? Didn't know there was going to be a test, did you? Mm. You got your programs, go home and study them. Okay, we come to the high point of the evening now where we're going to induct our new members. Mrs. Cox is going to help me, and Mr. Ray is going to also be over there to congratulate you after you have received your pin. So the first group would come to the stage. Rachel Asbury. Josh Bailey. William Bice. Kevin Blue.
Shannon Bird. Dana Burge. Brandon Card. Tanya Carroll. Ashley Shannon. Josh Cook. <laughs> Callie Cornett. <laughs> Thomasina Davis. Chance Donahue, <laughs> Ashley Eldridge, <laughs> Brittany Evans. Brittany Fox. <laughs> Heather Franz. <laughs> Andrew Goins. <laughs> Autumn Green. Brandy Harville, <laughs> Megan Henderson, <laughs> Robert Holder, <laughs> Chris Honeycutt. Joseph Joby, <laughs> Damon Johnson, <laughs> Mary King. Straight pins are hard to fill with. Uh, Adam Lawson. Brandon Lawson. Josh Lester. <laughs> Brittany Lowe. Mandy Marlowe. Josh Marlowe.
Allison Massingill. Ashley McAfee. Beth McCullough. Cody McCullough. Chris McGee. Josh Nelson. Brittany Peebley. Charles Rutherford. Jessica Shears. Justin Silcox. Jessica Staff. Katie Swafford. Kinsey Turnblazer. Rebecca Vance. Jennifer Vincent. Mallory Vincent. Dara White. Tabitha Wilhoyt. Now that you all have your credentials, look at what you have. You have um, a certificate to put in a nice frame when you get home. You also have a card to carry that shows you are a member of the Beta Club, and that will come in handy when we have Beta Club meetings. Because in the near future, we could be checking cards at the door to make sure we have the right people in the meeting and not just lay down class. And last of all, you have your, your card that also has your username and your password to get on the beta web. The beta web is an immense source of information for college-bound students. You can get information about the colleges you want to attend. You can get information about scholarships that those colleges uh, offer. You can get information about other scholarships that are just out there that aren't maybe connected to a, to a certain school. Information that I know you and your parents need to find out about, and, and, and the Beta Web has a lot of that information. There's also a homework helpline. There's a chat room that's monitored. There's all kinds of things in there, so I encourage you to go home or tomorrow in the library 
get on one of the computers and check out the beta web because you now can get on with your username and your password. Okay? And congratulations. All beta members to stand, and Miranda Powell is going to lead you in the pledge. Would everyone please join me in the saying of the pledge? I solemnly declare that I shall always strive to hold fast to the principles of honesty to endeavor constantly to maintain a creditable record, to cultivate in my life and conduct the principles of service and leadership. I further pledge myself to cooperate with the members of this club in the promotion of a sense of individual responsibility to our school, community, state, and nation, to make right the master of might, and to consecrate our comradeship to mutual helplessness and to the betterment of our fellow students. On the back of your programs, you'll notice we have a thank you section. The Beta Club program could not take place without the help of individuals and organizations and businesses within our community. You'll notice the first business that's, li that's listed is Ideal Florist. Normally, Ideal Florist is one of our biggest sponsors. They always give us fresh, um, what's it called, real flowers. We have fakes tonight, but they usually give us real ones. But um, Thursday night, the owner of Ideal Florist lost her husband, Mr. Gary Branham. And so I did not feel like it was right to go down there and they were burying him this morning. I just couldn't couldn't put that put them through that this year. And I told them we'd get back with them next year. But I'd like you like for you to remember the Gary Branham family in your prayers tonight. Um, Nancy Rutherford's culinary arts classes have prepared refreshments for all of us outside in the lobby. Rainbow Gardens and Nursery uh, lent us their pumpkins and their mums and their hay bales today as did uh, Mr. Hundley, gave us one of his hay, hay bales, or straw bales, they tell me they're straw, I'm a city girl. But um, we appreciate